Hello everyone, welcome back to Life Here YouTube channel. This is the fifth video of our complete general medicine series. In this series, we are going to cover practical and theoretical topics of general medicine. In our previous videos, we learned about general examination, systemic examination, topics of gastrointestinal system and hepatobiliary system. This video is about cardiovascular system in this video we will learn about acute rheumatic fever rheumatic valvular heart disease infective endocarditis hypertension and ischemic heart disease our next video will be on the topic heart failure acute pulmonary edema congenital heart disease and arrhythmia acute rheumatic fever is a multi-system disorder which follows pharyngeal streptococcal infection. Acute rheumatic fever affects children most commonly between the age of 5 to 15 years. Its diagnosis is based on updated Jones criteria. Presence of two or more major criteria or one major and at least two minor criteria plus evidence of previous streptococcal infection is required for the diagnosis of acute rheumatic fever. The major manifestations are carditis, polyarthritis, chorea, rhythm marginatum, subcutaneous nodules. Minor manifestations are clinically fever, polyarthralgia. Lab investigations include elevated ESR, C-reactive protein, ECG, shows prolonged PR interval. Supporting evidence of a preceding streptococcal infection within the last 45 days Ele shows by elevated or rising anti-streptolysin O or other streptococcal antibody or throat culture or rapid antigen test for group A streptococcus. Treatment of acute rheumatic fever is based on eradication of streptococci. A 10 days course of erythromycin or oral penicillin is administered to all patients to eradicate streptococcal infection. Bed rest is required in patients with severe carditis. Salicylates like aspirin is given and steroids like kidney solone is given. Our next topic is pneumatic valvular heart disease. Most commonly affected, affected valves are mitral valve, aortic valve. The disease may be stenotic or regurgitant. There are four types mitral stenosis, mitral regurgitation. Aortic stenosis and aortic regurgitation. We will make a separate video about this topic. So for now, let's move ahead to infective endocarditis. It is a microbial infection of endothelium of the heart. Endocarditis is classified into acute and subacute types depending on manifestation and their clinical course. So, acute infective endocarditis has a rapid course, while subacute infective endocarditis have no length course. Rapid valve destruction and abscess happens in acute type, while slow structural damage takes place in subacute type. Metastatic spread is common in acute type, and in subacute type, it is less common. Clubbing, splenomegaly, petechial hemorrhages are not found in acute type while they are found in subacute type. Acute type is fatal if not promptly treated while subacute type has a prolonged course unless complicated by ruptured mycotic aneurysm or embolism. Causative organism for acute type are Staph aureus, 
while in case of subacute it is strapped to coccus viridens clinical manifestation of infective endocarditis are general cardiac and extra cardiac general manifestations are fever weight loss night sweats and weakness cardiac manifestations include new murmur heart failure and heart blocks extra cardiac findings may be anemia clubbing splenomegaly root spots on fundus examination investigations done are blood culture echocardiography and its diagnosis is based on duke's criteria for the treatment of infective endocarditis the antibiotic should be administered parenterally to achieve high serum concentration since the vegetation is avascular the therapy is generally of prolonged duration and the selection of antibiotic should be based on culture report and minimum inhibitory concentration values and next topic is hyper hypertension hypertension is defined as the level of blood pressure at which there is increased risk for target organ damage and the benefit of the treatment over which the cost and hazards the diagnosis is based on the following categories of his pp should be less more than 140 mmhg systolic and more than 90 diastolic ambulatory blood pressure is used to evaluate blood pressure variable using oscillometric method over 24 period hours period with large number of measurement along with the sleep measurement in patient own environment it truly a reflection of bp so 24 hour mean should be more than 134 systolic and more than 80 for diastolic day time or awake mean should be more than 135 mmhg and for diastolic it should be more than 85 for night time mean it should be more than 124 systolic and more than 74 diastolic home blood pressure monitoring is done with validated electronic upper arm cuff device in the sitting position it should be more than 135 for systolic pp and more than 85 for diastolic pp as you can see here that office pp is usually more than ambulatory and home blood pressure monitoring it is because of the white coat hypertension and is a result of anxiety upon visiting a physician or hospital effect of hypertension in target organs may be retinal damages cardiac cns renal or on large vessels renal changes depend on the severity of the hypertension while cardiac includes left ventricular hypertrophy pulmonary edema and high incidence of coronary artery disease stroke and transient ischemic attacks hypertension encephalopathy are important effects on cns effect on kidneys include polyproteinuria and renal failure investigation there are some basic investigation to be done in all patient which include urine analysis for protein blood and glucose fasting blood sugar serum creatinine and blood urea nitrogen serum sodium and potassium serum lipid profile electrocardiography 
investigation in special group of patients which are at high risk include chest x-ray and echocardiography, renal ultrasonography and angiography, serum calcium and phosphate, thyroid stimulating hormone, urinary cortisol and catecholamine, plasma renin activity and aldosterone. Management includes some lifestyle modifications like relief of stress, salt restriction, weight reduction, regular exercise. Drug therapy include diuretics, ACE inhibitors and angiotensin receptor blockers, long-acting calcium channel antagonist and beta-adrenergic antagonist. Now comes ischemic heart disease. It is due to imbalance between oxygen supply and oxygen demand. It is defined as the lack of oxygen due to reduced perfusion. Ischemic heart disease has clinical manifestation such as angina pectoris myocardial infarction, arrhythmias, heart failure, and sudden death. This is the end of video. In our next video, we will talk about heart failure, acute pulmonary edema, congenital heart disease, and arrhythmia. So if you like the video and have watched till here, don't forget to like the video and share it with your friends. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel thank you